This video explains how to calculate the cumulative sum by groups in a data frame using the R programming language. So without too much talk, let's dive into the R code. In this video, I will show you several examples and all of these examples are based on the data frame that we can create with lines two and three of the code. So after running these lines of code, a new data frame is appearing at the top right, which is called data. And we can print this data frame at the bottom in the R Studio console by running line four of the code. And then you can see that our data frame contains nine rows and two columns, whereby the first column contains values and the second column is a group indicator. Now let's assume that we want to calculate the cumulative sum of the value column based on our groups in the group column. Then we can apply the AVE function, as you can see in lines six to eight of the code. And within this function, we first specify the values column, then we specify the group column, and then we specify the function that we want to use. So in this case, the cumsum function. And then I'm storing the output of the AVE function in a new data object that I'm calling CS1. So after running lines six to eight of the code, this new data object is appearing at the top right. And we can print the content of this data object to the RStudio console by running line nine of the code. And then you can see that we have created a vector containing nine different values. And these values actually correspond to the cumulative sums by groups in our data frame. It's also possible to create a data frame that contains these cumulative sum values. And this is what I want to show you in the next part of the code in lines 11 to 13. So in these lines of code, I'm using the aggregate function. And within this function, I'm specifying that I want to calculate cumulative sums by groups. I'm also specifying the name of our data set and then I'm storing the output of the aggregate function in a new data object that I'm calling CS2. So after running lines 11 to 13 of the code, you can see that this new data object is appearing at the top right as well. And when we print it to the console, you can see that we have created a new data frame object. This data frame contains only three rows that correspond to the three groups in our data set, group A, B, and C. And then we have created three additional columns which correspond to our values and each of these columns contains the cumulative sum of one of the groups. So in this case the cumulative sum of the group A is 136, the cumulative sum of the group B 4915 and the cumulative sum of the group C 71524. So in this first example I have explained how to create a data set containing the cumulative sum by group using the basic installation of the R programming language. However, it's also possible to create such a data set using the deployer package. And this is what I want to show you in the next example, starting in line 16. So as a first step, we need to install and load the deployer package. I have installed this package already. So for that reason, I'm just going to load it with line 17 of the code. And now we are able to use the functions of the deployer package, such as group by and mutate, as you can see in lines 19 to 21. So after running these lines of code, another data set object is appearing at the top right, which is called CS3. And we can print this data object to the bottom in the RStudio console by running line 22 of the code. And then you can see that we have created a tuple object, which contains three columns. The first column is our value column. The second column is our group column. So these two columns are corresponding to our input data. And then we have created a third column, which is called CS. And this column contains the cumulative sum by group. As you can see, the deployer package has created a data frame, which corresponds to the original structure of our input data. So depending if you would prefer to have a new structure as in the first example, or if you prefer to have the same structure as our input data frame, you might prefer base R or the deployer package. However, I want to show you even a third alternative. And this third alternative is based on the data table package. And this 
third example starts in line 24. So in lines 24 and 25, I'm first installing and loading the data table package. I have installed this package as well. So for that reason, I'm just going to load it as you can see in line 25. Then in the next step in line 27, I'm creating a duplicate of our input data frame because I also want to keep an original version of this data set and I'm calling this duplicate CS4. So after running this line of code, a new data frame is appearing at the top right, which is called CS4. And then in the next step, I'm applying the set DT function to this data frame and I'm specifying that I want to calculate the cumulative sums by group in our input data frame. So after running line 28, our new data object CS4 is updated and we can see that by printing this data set to the bottom in the RStudio console by running line 29 of the code. And then you can see that similar to the previous example, we have kept our two columns value and group and we have added a third column which contains the cumulative sums by group. Note that in this case we have created a data table object. So in the first example we have kept the data frame class. In the second example we have created a deep layer tipple. And in the third example we have created a data table. That's all I wanted to explain in this video. In case you want to learn more on this topic, you may check out my homepage statisticsglobe.com because on my homepage I have recently published a tutorial in which I'm explaining the content of this video in some more detail. I will put a link to this tutorial into the description of the video so you can find it there. If you have liked this video or if you have any questions, let me know in the comments section below. I'll try to respond to all comments as soon as I can. Furthermore, make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel to get notified about future video releases. I have already published about 500 videos on this channel and I'm releasing new videos on a daily basis. Thanks a lot for watching. See you in the next video.